Hey everybody, I'm Dave with Growing the Home Garden. It is the end of May, and so it's time to take a look around the garden so I can show you what all is going on here at this time of year. Uh, lots of different things happening. I got the yard mowed yesterday, so at least the yard looks nice. My weed eater trimmer actually broke. So I'm gonna have to go through and do some fixing on that before I can get a lot of the trimming and edging done. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look around, show you what I've got going. So I'm up over here at our mailbox garden area where this Coreopsis is really looking good. It is a great plant to have in your garden. It attracts pollinators and its other name is tick seed, but you don't have to worry about it attracting ticks because that's named that way because of the seeds look about the size and shape of a tick. So it actually has nothing to do with it. So it's kind of a poor name really, but it is what it is. But this is Coreopsis. Just call it by that. Oh look, there's a pollinator. Right there, little bee. Also, we got some cat mint over here, and I put in a little one that I did from cuttings over there. The cone flowers have not started blooming yet, but will be before too long. The yellow reblooming day lilies are starting to bloom. Got some more of those over here. The crepe myrtles got hit pretty hard this year, but as you can see, they're coming back. Lots of good foliage starting to emerge. And here's another one. It's more of a dark foliage type crepe myrtle. Should look pretty good. Here's one location where we had a Bradford pear tree, which is one of those plants that I absolutely love to hate. And, uh, you know, they're just terrible trees in general. But over here, we've kind of turned it into a little bit of a sunbed and we've got some poppies that are blooming and the poppies are going to start producing some seed so we'll collect the seed and use those to spread out some more poppies next year russian sage which i took some cuttings of not too long ago and we'll go check on those cuttings here in a little bit got some irises i've got some cleaning up to do in this little bed and then this here it's a really nice cat mint There's a volunteer red bud in this garden, which I thought, since it came here, maybe I should let it grow and eventually kind of replace the tree that was here, which was a Bradford pear tree. Red buds are much better trees. They're kind of short-lived, but they are beautiful in the spring. Over here in our side yard, we've got a few things starting to come along got some daylilies that are just beginning to start budding over here. Caryopteris is looking good but it won't bloom until late summer and early fall. More catmint and that is a beautiful switchgrass called heavy metal and I love it. It has been growing there in that same spot for many many years. I need to go in and make some divisions of it. This is one of my favorite trees. This is a purple smoke bush, purple smoke tree. Uh, the particular variety on this one is called Grace, which I got mostly because my daughter is named Grace. But it just has some gorgeous foliage. And when it flowers, it puts out these fine looking flowers that kind of resemble smoke, which is kind of how it gets its name. The flowers here are a type of viburnum. This one is Viburnum nudum, and the variety is Brandywine. What's really nice about it is if you look at the foliage, it's got this nice glossy foliage and some really pretty flowers. And it is a native Viburnum to the United States. All right, now in this weedy bed, I've got a few things happening. I've got some columbine over there I planted from seed, but it may not do anything I'm not real sure how that's gonna work out. I put some lavender in here, but as you can see, there's a lot of weeds and I'm gonna to have to come in and weed out. I moved a Japanese maple over to this side. It's in a pot. And I'll take a look over here at the arbor where you can see it has really come back from getting hit by the frost this year. This is a Concord grapevine. And we're starting to see little grapes. It is a seedy variety, 
which you know is kind of a pain sometimes when you want to eat it but they are very sweet and very juicy beyond the arbor is another redbud tree this one is a forest pansy redbud and in the spring when they all bloom with flowers and everything they look great just like all the others but you get this added interest just because of the foliage it's got this purple foliage and of course it's got the traditional heart shape and these lower leaves are not looking as good as those upper leaves but you can kind of get an idea of it what it looks like you put this together and with like say dogwoods and the dogwoods will be blooming about the same time as the foliage is coming out and it just is a really neat combination and then right over next to it we've got this Japanese maple that is just really looking nice please excuse the lawnmower noise in the background being a Saturday everybody in the neighborhood is out doing their lawns so and here's a hydrangea and then one of my favorite plants is the oak leaf hydrangea it's starting to bloom put out some really beautiful foliage it's named of course for its oak shaped leaf and they do really well in a part shade part sun environment here we're in almost full shade now except for right up there at the top you can kind of see some of that sunlight happening but they actually will tolerate a full sun location too so they are very versatile very good plants to have in your garden i'm going to hop over here and take a look at some of the hostas it's got some really big leaves on these love those big blue hosta leaves check out that I mean those are probably a foot long and we've got another hydrangea over here this one's another native variety and we've got more hostas over here in the back of course I've got a lot of weeding I need to do over there some of those hostas are starting to produce some flower stalks look at that a lot of people think of hostas only for their foliage, but they do produce some flowers that are actually attractive to some pollinators. I have not mulched this area, which is probably why I've got some weeds in there, but once the hostas start to grow and fill in, they kind of overtake everything and you don't really get that many weeds after they've got their full foliage on it. Here's another hydrangea this one came from the original one that I believe I did as a layered cutting and I moved it over here to this location over here we're looking at a hookara and this one is a palace purple variety which you can see is beginning to bloom and down here southern comfort Now this here is a very neat salvia. I like it a lot, but it really likes to grow a lot. As you can see, this is all salvia that got planted from one plant many years ago. Uh, it's about to bloom. This one is black and blue salvia. I believe it's salvia garantica. And it spreads by runners, so don't be afraid to pull out stuff that you don't want. If it starts to get a little aggressive, feel free to rip things out. It's not going to hurt the plant. In fact, you probably need to do that to keep it contained. Otherwise, it'll take over other perennials and plants that you have planted nearby. So we're migrating over to the vegetable garden area now, where I have had to put some bird netting over top of our blueberry bushes. I've got a couple of blueberry bushes planted directly outside of the vegetable garden and a couple are in pots, a couple are in the ground, but all of them are getting some fruit and the birds are loving them. So I'm hoping to have these ripen up. In fact, I, I see that they've beaten me to quite a few of these already. So I'm putting that up. I'm also putting some CDs up here that kind of make some light reflections hopefully do scare them away. We'll see how effective that is. In the vegetable garden now we've got some tomatoes. These are the Amish paste tomatoes that are just doing fantastic. These leaves look nice and healthy. Uh, we've got a little damage on them probably from slugs. The slugs have been terrible this year. But they are looking great having no issues with them. They're starting to produce some flowers so um, 
I'm going to let them go. I'm going to let them grow and put those flowers out and hopefully we'll have some tomatoes here in a couple weeks. Our snap peas are beginning to put out some flowers too, so we shouldn't have too long to wait for snap peas to be producing. We've been um, getting the Oregon snow peas, I think that's it. Yeah, the Oregon snow peas we've been tasting and they've been pretty delicious so far. And here are the Oregon snow peas. They are nice. These need harvested. Now the thing with these peas is the more you pick it, the more they're going to produce. So, you know, don't let them get too big. Keep picking and picking and picking. And that also goes for things like zucchini and squash. If you want more of a harvest, pick them when the fruit is younger and hasn't been fully developed. And you'll get more and more and more as you go. Speaking of squash and zucchini, I'm coming over here to check out one of our zucchini plants. I'm going to try something different this year. I've always had issues with the squash vine borer. And the squash vine borer is an insect that lays its eggs at the base of the plant. And then when they hatch, they burrow into the plant. And your plant, you, you kind of notice something going wrong when it all, all the leaves all of a sudden start to wilt. And if you look at the base, you'll see kind of where they bore into the stalk. And, and you can make surgery on it and open it up and pull those insects out. I've not done that really, but I usually just successively plant. So what I'm trying to do this year is a couple different things. For one thing, this is lemon balm, which lemon balm has a lot of anti-insect properties to it. A lot of people use it to ward off mosquitoes. And if you know one of the basic concepts with companion planting is that you are trying to disguise things. And so I thought, well, why don't I harvest some of the lemon balm, put it out here, see if it'll, it'll kind of hide the zucchini. So that's just something I'm testing, seeing if that works. I don't know if it will or not yet, but we'll see. I did the same thing over here with the yellow squash. So we'll see how that goes on it. I'm also wondering if I need to coat the base of the stem. I'm thinking maybe a, a mixture of like lime to coat it and cover it might help to fend those off. The first pepper planting is doing great over here. I'm looking at a serrano pepper right now. We've got the jalapenos. I basically have it organized so I've got all the spicy on one side and all the sweet on the other side. Um, I'm not really worried about cross-pollination between them. I'm not sure I'll save the seeds, but I may save the seeds just to see what happens. But the orange bell peppers are looking good over here and over there as well. Companion planting of basil. And then we've got mini stuffing peppers. Those are not really peppers you do for like a cooked stuffing. They're more of a smaller size pepper uh, that's more appropriate for say stuffing your face or snacking. Now here's the second planting bed of the peppers. Now on this bed I've had a lot of issues with slugs. Uh, usually I just wait them out and the new foliage comes out and they'll be fine. They can kind of take a little bit of that damage from the slugs, so it's not a big deal. But if you do want to take care of slugs, you put out a little saucer of beer and they'll go in and drown themselves in it. That's commonly used. Um, we also put in some sweet potato slips here. Now, these are getting a little sun damage because I rushed it and I didn't acclimate them. But they will recover. Sweet potatoes are tough. So what we're going to do is after we've harvested all the peppers at the end of the season, we'll be able to dig up the bed and pull out all the potatoes. So it's kind of a companion planting where the peppers are going to use some nutrients, the potatoes are going to use different nutrients, and they're growing together well. Now sweet potatoes are not in the same family of plants as peppers are, so it's not a problem. Uh, they are actually part of the morning glory family, so they're completely different areas. Um, they will should work fine together but we are seeing a little bit of flea beetle damage in fact I can see one of them right there see that little black spot that is a flea beetle and what they do is they will create damage on leaves that look like that they'll put these little teeny tiny holes in it um, they're called flea beetles because they're little tiny beetles and when you touch them or something like that they will jump like a flea does uh, but they're they're a minor pain. You can treat it with, say, a neem oil or an insecticidal soap and take care of them. They're not really something that's going to decimate your crop. Uh, 
I will say one thing about that though. I have had really bad luck with eggplant and flea beetles. It seems like eggplants are like candy for flea beetles. So you would probably want to put some sort of protection or maybe some sort of present preventative on them, like spray them every couple weeks while you have flea beetles around and try to take care of it with like a neem oil or something. Over here, you got a few little carrots going. They didn't produce as much as I was hoping they would. And I believe a rabbit came in here and ate some of the tops off a few of them. So that's a little frustrating, but you know, that's part of gardening. These little seedlings are melons coming up. So they're a cantaloupe style melon, musk melon. And let's see, what do we call them? If you can read my handwriting there. The atomic orange corn we planted a few weeks ago is doing really nice. We've got a few spots where it didn't pop up. You can see a little hole there and a hole there. But we planted it a little extra thick, so we can maybe take a couple of these that are a little too close together, like right here, and move it over to there. We'll have to see. I'm going to wait till evening to do that so it has an overnight to recover. Uh, but the corn is doing really nicely. I'm really excited about that atomic orange corn. In this raised bed, we've actually got a daikon radish growing. You can see it's starting to flower, and I'm kind of torn if I want to just let it go to seed so I can harvest the seed, or if I should just go ahead and pull those out so we can get more root production. I might do a combination of that. But they're pretty tasty. They're not extremely hot as far as spiciness goes. But I do want to plant something else here in this bed before too long. In case you're wondering about this bed, this is actually a fire pit that I bought at Tractor Supply Company and converted to a raised bed. It's about three feet around and about a foot to 16 inches deep, probably closer to 16 inches. And you can fill that up and use it as a raised bed. It is so simple and easy to do. Makes a great metal raised bed. Over here on this side of the garden, I've got a whole bunch of leftover seedlings that I'm not going to plant. Got to figure out something to do with those. Uh, there's a Woodle Orange Tomato, Pink Jazz Tomato, a fig tree that I grew from, actually not that one, that one I bought last year. But this one here is from a cutting. And I'll show you how to do that here in a couple weeks. This is a hibiscus. Grew that also from a cutting from another hibiscus. And got some peppers that are still growing in their pots. And then over there, that is Paul Robeson. That is a delicious tomato. Can't wait to see something get producing off of it. And over here is another Woodle Orange. So I've got three Woodle Orange tomato plants put in the garden. One of my favorites. Right here is a basil. This is Red Reuben. And next door to it is a cinnamon basil. Basil is a great companion plant. I've said that before, and I'll, I'll keep on saying it but definitely put that up over near your tomatoes somewhere. Outside of the vegetable garden, I started planting some spicy peppers to use as kind of a border. I figure if one of those creatures that likes to eat my garden decided they wanted to eat something, then let's give them something spicy. So these are uh, jalapenos, and over around the corner, we've got some serranos. I'm gonna fill in some more here before too long. This here is a trombetta squash, which gets really interesting fruit from it. And it will grow massive. It could have vines that are 20 foot long easily. In fact, I planted it, or my kids planted it. I'll give them the credit for it, next to their swing set. And it pretty much ate the swing set. Um, what we're gonna do is it's gonna grow up this post here and go up to the top of the post. And then we're gonna put in some poles to go across the post so that it can grow across there and, and do a little bit of vertical gardening with it. Now, trombetta squash, the, the fruits will actually be about 16 inches to 24 inches long, and they'll curl up a little bit. But if they're hanging, they'll probably go a little bit straighter. So we're really excited about that. It is a delicious tasting squash. I do recommend it if you've got the space to grow it. Gave you an update on the dappled willows a couple videos ago. 
Just great plants. I love those. Yesterday, I spontaneously threw together a compost bin, and I'm using some fencing material I've used previously for a compost bin. Uh, but if you just get these, get four panels of it, leave one of them partially open so you can open and close and get your compost out, and then dump what you want in here. Here I've got some logs in it, kind of a hugel culture kind of thing with uh, some grass clippings, some packing material. I used a cardboard box on the bottom to help kill off any grass that might be there. That cardboard will disappear over time as the worms get to it. And so it's just going to be producing some extra compost. We just have so much yard waste that we collect that I really need some bigger bins to throw in some stuff. So that's what we did with that. This is about four foot by four foot and we're not going to be really messing with it too much. It's going to be kind of a passive compost bin, but we'll just dump all the yard waste in there. Compost doesn't have to be put into a big contraption. It doesn't have to be put into a bin sort of setting. You can just create a pile and keep turning it, and it'll do fine that way. It just depends on how much time you want to spend on it. So I'm back in a really shady spot in our yard now, and this was our red buckeye. I was really excited about it because it had so many blooms on it, and I thought I was going to get a ton of seeds from it. Well, I'm not seeing many seeds. I see one right there. There's another one producing here. But it really didn't get pollinated well enough. And I know there's been some that have been taken off by the squirrels and the birds. Some that have just fallen down. In fact, our freezes and frosts may have had something to do with that too. But there's only a couple here this year. I'm kind of disappointed, but I'm happy that I have at least got two that grew from seed I had last year. Now, something that's not a disappointment, I'm going to come around here. I thought this Japanese maple was dead, only to discover that it's regrowing from that stem. So what I need to do is cut off the top part that's all dead growth and then transplant this into something else. I think I'm going to do it into a pot so I can move that around and take better care of it. It really doesn't need to be in this location. I had a lot of plans for this area, but I probably am not going to get to those. That's a Cumson forsythia. It has kind of a variegated foliage, which is neat. Need to get some cuttings of that one of these days. And over to another Japanese maple. This is Germain's gyration. Just look at that. Thread leaf type. And it's got these nice twisty branches. Definitely one that you should look into if you've got a spot for it. So thanks for tagging along on my video tour here of our vegetable garden, our ornamental gardens, and seeing what's going on. Uh, appreciate you following along with Growing the Home Garden, and please like and subscribe. I'd love to have you along so I can show you some more stuff as the summer progresses. Uh, but again, I'm Dave with Growing the Home Garden. Thanks for watching, and look forward to talking to you later.